before I ever make my first decision, I, I mean, this is personal, but I always have my suture ready first, okay? If I make a decision, but if something goes wrong, I hit a monster bleeder, I want you all scrambling for suture, you know, while I'm trying to pinch it off. Her respiration's good. So, so chances the are the blood pressure ready to go. Uh, she didn't pee all the time because she didn't feel like, blood. She didn't pee because she wouldn't pee, just so you know, so the bladder might be full, but she didn't feel anything. Okay, not too worried. All right, so uh, basically that's where we are. Uh, in dogs, when we make our spay incisions, we're typically often starting right around the umbilicus, maybe just below it, and traveling this way. Deep-chested dogs, I mean, when you get like Irish Wolfhound, Great Dane, Boxers, you know, it's that umbilicus is kind of at this angle over here, and that huge chest comes up, so different breeds will have slightly different scenarios. Cats, we do cut further down, that we don't typically start near the umbilicus, we're more at a halfway point between the pubis and the umbilicus. If they want to apply the other set of top clamps, they can do it over top of the other ones. Oh, we have more top clamps? Yeah. yeah okay. One In most practices, you only have one set. Uh, give me, okay, just, uh, why don't you all just give me, uh, Diagonal. Why don't you just, just clamp one here and one there just to help it keep it shit. A lot of times you can clamp them over top of the other top clamps. Yeah. Okay, it's too much. Can we move it too much? No, it's no. fine. And the other thing about drapes, you know, like you can tear it a little bit or whatever. Alright, so everybody's pretty much ready? We're gonna do rock and roll. Alright. Um, now, he's going to look at your anesthesia people and say, can I cut? What are you going to say? Yeah. Okay. We're happy with the red ball. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes when you cut, if you're out of your sure patient's leg, you're going to know touch it. Below okay, so you can touch on it, don't what we're touch looking for the sides of it. With those very first cuts, uh, you know, if this dog immediately starts getting tachycardic, he, he might not move or something, but let's say his heart rate all of a sudden just doubles, he's feeling it. She, she is feeling it. So those are just, you know, the kind of things you look for at those uh, particular moments. All right, so anyway. Uh, of course, we're using the linea. So we're just gonna go through the skin. I'm gonna go a little wider on the incision, just okay. so I can show you all around a little bit. Make sure you ask her for instruments. I'm sorry, let me get <laughs> rat tooth forceps, uh, the one by twos. Thank you. <laughs> It, it it's very much most veterinarians will not have a scrub person in to hand them any of this stuff. This is it takes a lot of like thinking about it for him to think to ask you for this kind of stuff. So what I want to do right now, everybody can shuffle over and look. Okay. If you look right now, this is the subcutaneous tissues. Okay. If I slide it back and forth, I can make out that linea underneath. It's actually riding right underneath my scalpel right there. Actually, uh, we need gauze. We need uh, some sponges. So, non-sterile hand gauze sponges? It's the sink. Yeah, there's two. Okay, so open it up and pass it to one of your sterile people. It's getting harder to see already when I'm trying to show you. It should be longer than already at this point. Put your thumb in the cave. Thumb in the cave. Okay, pull this up, take this hand, pull this over, and tuck it. There you go. Okay, and then this one you pull down so it exposes it. Okay, it looks like it might be double wrapped. Okay, grab that. Just grab that whole thing. If it's double wrapped, you can put it on top of the instrument stand, and you can open it on the instrument stand. Put it flat. Is it gone? I don't know. We'll find out. Okay. okay. So Pull your gauze out. Take those out. Put them on the table. Get rid Throw of the other thing on the ground. Get rid of that. Throw it on the ground. And and you can throw your indicators on the ground. Well, if you all take a piece of gauze or something. Yeah. 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 And remember, we blot. We don't wipe. Okay. okay. So Who's your other non sterile person? Jen. 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 And, Je and uh, Stephanie. Okay. So just and Stephanie's supposed be to be prepared. Here. Go ahead. Keep blotting. Are they supposed to be in here right now? Yes. When you blot, you see how I'm pressing firmly? So that okay. Because I don't want to wipe, but I really do want to suck it up. Okay. So, as, you know, as capillaries leak, uh, we'll look for it. So anyway, if, like I said, I'm just looking for the linea, and I can see it right there, just kind of riding 
that's my target that I'm looking for. You know, depending on your patient, it's going to be how fat they are and all that good stuff. So what I'm actually going to do on this particular patient is I'm grabbing the linear right now, picking it straight up well away from any organs that are possibly inside. And I'm going to go ahead and make a stab incision. Sometimes you can almost just kind of scrape at these subcutaneous tissues a little right bit. You see how nice that just kind of carves it back without truly cutting. And once again, now, now you see the linea. Okay, everybody sees the linea. Remember, that's an actual. That's actually a tendon. It's the tendon and that connects the two rectus abdominis sides. But there's no blood vessels in it, so that's why it's our target. So at this point, once again, now that I really have it, I mean, once I go through here, I will be in the abdomen. Making sure there's not any trapped uh, organs in there. And we're going to enter the abdomen at this point. What I can do is take these, put them in there, spread them, and use them as a little guide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Both directions. Okay, so now we just opened up and we'll just be plugged in. Room. All right, so why doesn't everybody just stick your index finger in there and milk it around a little bit? Oh, yeah. Really? Go <laughs> milk it around. Go, get in there. Okay, so most of what you're feeling is the small intestines right now. There's actually a lot of feces in there. Oh no, I will not drop it. You are a little bit too close to the Yeah, <laughs> I play with a lot of, I don't play with this, but like, you see a lot of things. How many people so went looking for red yeah, the small yeah. Like I said, they're, they're pretty poop filled. How many people went looking for the red for um, their anesthesia? This is, here, Morgan, you're on my side. Huh? Go ahead and put your finger in, ride it across the top until you get to the far side, and it's a spleen. Feel that. Once you get to over here, this big flat spleen. Okay. Feel it? Are you on top of it? I don't know. I'm afraid I'm going to mess something up. You're not going to mess it up. <laughs> yeah. You know, stay, stay um, on the top, and it's right here. It's just the bottom part of the spleen. When, when you're getting ready to close, let me know. We'll lock down the next one. Y'all can do it from that side. That way we can get it done, because it takes so long. Do you mind that? As long as she's doing okay otherwise, I'm the, okay. The patient's stable. And if she's, if her heart rate starts to drop, her respiration starts to drop, she may be getting cold at that point. Let him know. So when you feel that big You're going to turn down the anesthesia a little bit. Judge, you're going to judge it to yeah, her. Okay. And but at that point, she's ace, probably right? cold. Ace promazine makes the spleen very large. You want to pick up all the good stuff sitting around. Okay, so right? this dog's spleen was probably because not this big before we gave it ace. the next year going to need to be able to get in now there. Now about getting it. And you right. can't have this clutter. So, around. what I'm going to do... Um, if it's open, it's not sterile anymore. So, don't turn your head. I'm kind of take all in the other just continuing to push some of these small <laughs> intestines okay. up take, yonder. Back around and in. Take, take all the trash up the other table. So, actually, like with my fingers right now, I can feel there's just a... It should be there, and everything else mm -hmm. is hidden. I don't necessarily need to look for it. I can find it with the snow. Okay. <laughs> so when you're putting the snow coat in, what I'll typically do is, once again, lift up and ride it across the top of the interior abdomen. So I'm not going to catch on anything. Then I'm going to yeah. flip it and try to snag the other one. If I go in this way, it just really just like catch and test and move off. A lot of times you do, you're catching all kinds of crap before you find what you're looking for. And sometimes you're lucky and, or good, and come out with the uterus right there. Okay. Okay. If you look at what I'm doing, so this is the one of the uterine horns. 
see I already found the bifurcation. This is the other unit horn coming out in this direction. And that way will be the cervix. And we'll get to that. Okay. So, what I'm going to do right now at this point, yeah, and this is where, of course, uh, need to be more careful because at this we need to break a ligament but not tear things this is where bleeding can happen most people who see something like a spay or neuter for the first time are usually stunned at the lack of blood i mean you know if you do it right I, you know you could have maybe one gauze by the time you're done because you're just tying off you know any big bleeders or anything okay so everybody look that is the ovary right there okay feel it it's going to feel like a big, kind of like a lima bean with fat around it. Right? Okay. And this is the suspensory ligament. It's coming off this cranial side right here. This is what's holding it tight to the back wall. This needs to be broken. Feel that. I want you to take, go like this. Strum it like a guitar string. Ooh, okay, that's how tight. Wow, that's and, tight. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm pulling, and this is just a tiny little dog. Yeah. I know. Uh, you know, I hate to say this. I know a lot of women vets. They cannot spay dogs greater than 100 pounds. They don't have the strength to literally break right. suspensory. Do you break it with your hands? It's better to break it with your hands. There's a lot here. We're going to be doing a lot of tearing with our hands intentionally because the more you use that scalpel, we briefly covered this in lecture. The, the veins don't recognize, it's just such a sharp cut and you get much less clotting. The more you tear and pull and snap those veins, the more they realize they've been cut, okay? So yeah, this is a pretty tight ligament and if you listen, ready? On, on three, one, two, three, pop. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Oh, wow. Is it? Okay. If, is it bigger and thicker with the larger the dog? Oh, absolutely. Wow. Okay. So this is, like great Dane. This, this is it. This is, you know, the remnant of that ligament that I just broke, okay? So, ligament, uh, suspensory ligament, ovary. This is called the proper ligament of the ovary where the uterine uh, horn attaches to the ovary. And what we're concerned about with this whole surgery are all these blood vessels right here. These are the ovarian arteries, uh, veins, uh, and what we don't want to cut, okay? So this is where the main surgery is. This. Here is called the broad ligament of the ovary or the meso ovarium. It's got different names for it. And we just cut right through with our fingers just like that, okay? So again, I'm just keeping just enough traction on to expose these veins here, getting the fat away. But if I pull too hard, I, you know, I can easily snap all this stuff, all right? Uh, uh, two straight. Uh, uh, hemostats one at a time at work. So I'm going to clamp one across here. Next. I'm going to intentionally push that little blob of fat out of the way. Clamp a little further down. Okay. All right, Shannon, since you're across from me, you're just going to keep gentle traction on this. Why don't you go ahead and just pull it here for a little bit so you can feel about how much traction you can put on it. All right? okay. So you're doing it just like, just about like that. Try to keep it straight for me and don't let it wrinkle up, okay? okay. So like over here? Yeah, you're absolutely fine because this is where I'm going to go ahead and tie a minimum of two ligatures and cut. Yeah, you can hold them wherever you want. Um, the holders with the uh, like I said, I, it's not ideal to have this break in the table between us. Now what's really hard to do is taking a needle and putting it around all this without stabbing it into towels and skin and all that kind of stuff. So it's actually much easier to slip your needle holders behind this. Just grab the end of the suture and just tie it right there. Okay. I don't need a surgeon's knot on something like this. There's no tension. So this is just a ligature. A ligature, all it does is go around. Okay, remember? Four throws. This is two knots. This four knots. Okay, and I need uh, someone to cut. Okay. You're going to leave a 
about two millimeters. Not too close to not, not too far. Okay. That's probably about four or five millimeters, but oh. it'll do. Okay. This is absorbable, okay, but uh, you know, we don't need to leave any extra in you know, that's yeah. absorbing. Yeah. Let's just get that straightened out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. So why am I putting two ligatures on? In case one comes out. Yeah, straight. And if one did, you know, especially on a cat, kitten, maybe a small puppy, bleeding would be insignificant. But if that box yeah, were working out yeah. and mm -hmm. one came off, the dog would die. Okay. So I'm actually just going to leave this here right now. Uh, red tooth forcep, one my tooth. All right, scalpel. And now what we're going to do is cut right here. Oh, take that back. Okay, so you've got that polyuterine. Uh, arm or tube, whatever you want to say. Now this, um, so this is what we are going to call now the ovarian pedicle that is full of blood vessels, lots of veins and a big artery, okay? I've got it clamped, needless to say it's not going to bleed. What we don't ever want to do is just open this and let it quickly snap back into the abdomen, deep as it will, because it's attached on the backside, and then find out that's going to bleed, okay? So, Always gonna just kind of hold on to the tip as we release, see if anything's starting to sprout, bleed. And even here, sometimes just by having that, you know, just tension on it, even that can, you know, keep a small blood vessel from bleeding. So I'll sort of just gently release, everything looks happy, and knows where to go, okay? So, sorry, you're doing fine. What we're going to do is this is still more of that broad ligament. Okay, we just tear this till we get to the bifurcation, and now we're going to do the exact same thing to the other side. Okay, right, you, right ovary, left ovary. Which one am I cutting right now? Right. Right. So which one's more cranial? Which one's more caudal? Just like the kidneys. Right. Okay. So remember, left loose last. So the right is harder to find. It is higher and deeper and further back. One of the reasons I intentionally start with the left, because once you get the left, all you got these traces, and you'll find the right rather than dig and dig with the snow cook. Okay? Well, you have to go the ordinary doctor will want you. Okay. So here's our next ovary. You want to that? Yeah. That's a little bit that more lima beanish. Okay. Here's our suspensory ligament. Okay. Twang. One, two, three. This will pop on that one. That's the actual ligament. We'll gently strip away some of the fat. Be careful that we don't want to use tear blood vessels. And we are going to use the uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Who starts again? One I'm more clumsy. pair, please. Let me try to double check. The, I'm you're gonna, clumsy. Uh, I'll do it with the curve. That's fine. Okay. So once again, you're gonna keep traction on that for me. You wanna do it? Okay. okay. Pull, pull at this. You know, just get an idea of how much you can pull without yeah. feeling like you're gonna tear or you know rip the whole thing out. And like I said, yeah, you know, realize how much more difficult this would be if we're trying to run this through and then pull the whole suture mm -hmm. around. So it's so much more simple just to you know, do that quick back entrance, let's say. Work smart, not hard. Okay, someone should already be prepping their scissors, knowing that they're going to be cutting suture in a second. Let's try to do a two millimeter. Yep. Good job. You know, you just don't want to go too close to the knot for obvious reasons. You don't want the knot to come apart. Just enough that no more than necessary is left. 
and I realize here I can really choose how much sutra I want to conserve. I should be able to finish this whole surgery with just this one strand at this point. So that top is already tearing. Luckily, we've. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, I forgot about that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what I usually do. But, um, You're in teacher mode. We're going to put it in teacher mode. Okay. It's got one by twos. Same situation, we're going to hold, get the two suture. Uh, we want the ligatures to stay with the dog, they don't come with us. Okay. So, look for that bleeder again, just going to hang on to that tip, release, everything's happy. Good so far? Doing great, okay. Now these, um, these two have to stay on Okay, because this is still connected to the blood supply. If you took these off right now, they would start squirting blood all over. So those two will stay on. Let's bring this back. And now we work our way down to the cervix and the uterus. Now, if you take a look here, you see the two uterine horns, and you see the two uterine arteries are the red lines. It's about a centimeter underneath them, okay? Uh, when you get a dog that is, I'm not going to call this dog in heat, but when you get a dog that's pregnant in heat, big, I mean, these uterine arteries.